Chemical Tests In this video, we're going to be looking at how to identify cations. These are positive ions such as sodium, potassium and calcium. There are three different methods. The first one is by doing the flame test. In the second method, we're going to use sodium hydroxide to do a precipitation test. And finally, we're going to look at flame emission spectroscopy. So starting with the flame test, let's say over here I have a sample of an unknown metal and I want to identify which ions are in this sample. So I'm going to get a wire and a Bunsen burner. However, the first thing I'm going to do is open this part of the Bunsen burner so that oxygen can enter and we have complete combustion giving us a blue flame. Now, before we place our wire into the sample, we have to make sure that it's clean. So, we're going to dip it in some dilute hydrochloric acid and then place it over the blue flame until there's no more color visible. This will remove any previous metals that were on the wire as an impurity. Now we're ready to take a sample and place it over the blue flame of the Bunsen burner. Depending on the color, we can identify which metal is present in the sample. Now this test will only work if we have a single element in the sample. It will not work for mixtures, because if we have different metals, then they will mask each other and as a result we will not be able to identify correctly which metal was present. So here are the colours that we have to know. Copper gives a green flame, sodium is yellow, lithium is crimson, calcium is brick red or you could say orange slash red, and potassium is lilac. And here's a good way that you can memorise the colours. Copper G ate soy and crashed his little crimson car into pots of lilac. So, copper is green, sodium is yellow, lithium is crimson, calcium is red and potassium is lilac. Okay, moving on to the second test, using sodium hydroxide to identify cations. Let's say over here we have a sample but we're not sure which cation is present. It could be any of these three or maybe some of these three. To find out, we're simply going to add sodium hydroxide into the sample of the cation and we should get a precipitate. The precipitates will be coloured and then we can use that to work out which cation was present. Now before we look at the colours, let's quickly see exactly what's happening in the reaction. So let's say in our sample we have iron 2 plus ions. We're going to be adding hydroxide ions, this comes from the sodium hydroxide. The iron 2 plus and the hydroxide ions react together to form a metal hydroxide. And we can see that because it's a solid, it means it's going to be insoluble and therefore will form a precipitate. What we have here is an ionic equation. And you can be asked to write the ionic equation for different reactions with sodium hydroxide. But don't worry, there's an easy trick to it. But first, let's make sure it's balanced. Okay, so notice that there's a 2 here, meaning I'm going to have two hydroxides over here, and hence why I have a 2 in front of this. Okay, why don't you try to finish off this equation? And this should be the answer. Copper 2 plus reacts with two hydroxides to make copper hydroxide, which has a small 2 at the bottom. And it's the same for magnesium, it's a 2 plus, and also the same for calcium. However, with iron 3 plus and aluminium 3 plus, it's going to be a bit different. So when they react with hydroxide ions, there's going to be a 3 at the bottom of the OH on the formula and don't forget to put a 3 in front of the hydroxide. So, now that we know the equations, let's look at the colours that we have to memorise. These are all of the colours 
for the different metal hydroxides. However, there's one more special rule. With aluminium hydroxide, currently it's white. However, if we keep adding sodium hydroxide, it will go colourless. And this is the only one that does that. Flame emission spectroscopy. So again, we have a sample of an unknown metal ion. We're going to place the sample in a machine called a spectroscope. Once the sample is in the machine, a flame runs through it and we get a line spectrum. Here's what an example of a line spectrum of calcium would look like. And here's one for potassium. Now you don't have to memorize where the lines go or explain why it happens. However, the reason the lines are different is to do with the electronic structure. We know that every single element has a unique electronic structure and therefore they will have different lines in their line spectrum. With flame emission spectroscopy, if the concentration of the ions is low in the sample, then the lines will also be dimmer. So this is what it would look like for a low concentration, and this is what it would look like for a high concentration. But remember, the lines will still be in the same place. Okay, let's try an example question on flame emission spectroscopy. Here we have five different line spectra of five different metal ions. And over here, we have a mixture of two metal ions in one sample. Use the five spectra above to identify which two metals are in the sample. So basically, all we have to do is match the lines. Now, to make it easier, here's a trick. Why don't you look for the lines that don't appear in the mixture? For example, we can see potassium has a line over here, but it's nowhere to be seen on our mixture, meaning potassium is not in the question. Also, lithium has a line over here, and the line is not in the mixture, so we can also ignore lithium. Also, there's a line here for copper, but there's no line in the mixture, so copper is not involved either. Since the question says identify the two elements, that means it must be calcium and sodium. And if you look, all the lines will match up. Okay, to finish off, we're going to do a comparison between the flame test and flame emission spectroscopy. So, both of them can identify ions. However, for the flame test, it will only work if the sample contains a single ion. With flame emission spectroscopy, it will work for a single ion, or even if you have a mixture of different ions. Also, flame emission spectroscopy is an instrumental method, which means that it's going to be more sensitive. That means it will work even with smaller concentrations. It's rapid, so it will take less time to get the results. And accurate, meaning it's not likely to make a mistake. So those were the different chemical tests to identify the positive ions. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.